Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dennis and here's my assistant Bob who always helps us with really tough questions. In this video and in the videos to follow, I'll be explaining how to produce a really nice piece of written academic work. Let's go! At the end of this course you will be able to learn how to develop good academic writing strategies. You'll also learn how to provide in-text citations and properly reference your academic work. You'll also find out what plagiarism is and how to avoid it and in general you'll obtain different important academic writing strategies. So when you go to university you're expected to produce a thoroughly worked piece of academic written work because many courses are assessed through academic assignments. So all the information and exercises that I use in this course come from two excellent books, namely Murray 2012 and Bailey 2011. But if you would like to go beyond the reading list, you can also take a look at an excellent book by Swales and Fig 2012. So how much do you know about academic writing? Before we start this lecture, I would like you to take a look at the following questions and try to answer them. So the first question. The main difference between academic writing and normal writing is that academic writing A. uses long words B. tries to be precise and unbiased and C is harder to understand. What is the right answer? And if you guess that the answer is B, you'll be correct. Second question. Teachers complain most about university students that they A. Uh, do not answer the question given, B. Do not write enough words, and C. Do not properly reference their academic piece of writing. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is A. Many students do not answer the question given, but I would also say C, because in my experience, in my teaching experience, I have corrected loads of papers with incorrect references, with students not writing the reference section correctly. Third question. What is plagiarism? A. A dangerous disease. B academic offence and C, an academic website. Of course, the answer is B, it's a serious academic offence. We will talk more about plagiarism and how to avoid it in subsequent video lectures. Stay tuned. And the fourth question. An in-text citation looks like, first, Zubalov, 2020, B, Denis Zubalov, 2020, and C, Zubalov, comma, D, dot, 2020. So what is the correct answer? Of course, it's A, it's Zubalov, comma, 2020. So if you have answered most of the questions correctly, you are on the right track. If not, don't worry about it. By the end of this course, you'll get your answers right. And now let's take a look at how academic writing is different at the university from that in schools. First, it's the different philosophies. At school, the obtained knowledge will prepare you for the outside world, for example, your work or your study. At the university, however, the main aim is to further develop um, your intellect, analysis skills, your specialist knowledge in the subject chosen and your ability to take forward the field of study. Basically, you'll have to provide innovative ideas. Second is the reproduction versus critical thinking. At school, the focus is on absorbing and applying information. Basically, what happens is that you reproduce the information that you have obtained and display your knowledge. At the university, however, the focus is on the analysis and critical thinking about that information. In other words, you are expected to evaluate whatever information you have obtained. Three originality and creativity. At the university, students do not only evaluate information, but they also need to produce their own ideas 
and not only produce their own ideas but support them with sound arguments. Likewise, freedom of expression is of paramount importance at the university because students are free to express themselves in order to question, challenge, disagree, form their own ideas, propose new ways of looking at things. And this is crucial because freedom of expression basically advances science. In other words, you're able to push the limits. Four, it's the emphasis on extensive reading. So basically extensive and careful reading is essential in order to give depth to your academic work and to provide a strong basis for your own arguments and ideas that you support. Likewise, it gives you the uh, opportunity to familiarize yourself with the relevant literature. Basically, you will obtain different viewpoints on one particular issue that you're looking at. And only then can you proceed and comment usefully and with due authority. Five, at the university, the critical element of your intellectual development has traditionally been on the expectation that you'll gradually demonstrate the ability to understand and present concepts and ideas in much greater detail. So in other words, it's not enough just to stick to the first idea that comes to your mind or the first interpretation of this idea. So you'll need to research ideas more thoroughly and consider them with a critical eye. So it's important to note that when you comment on or critically analyze ideas, you're expected to provide a carefully and logically thought through arguments based on your own ideas and uh, those of scholars that you have read. Six, sound reasoning and the importance of evidence. So a well-structured piece of writing can actually convince and influence. But how is this done? How? Okay, according to Bob, this is done through a clear and well-reasoned argument. Likewise, this is done through a familiarity and consideration of the relevant literature. Three, through the ability to articulate your own ideas and opinions effectively. And finally, and most importantly, is that you have to provide evidence. So what does this mean? It means that any statements that you make in your academic writing, they have little or basically no value unless they are supported by clear evidence. Otherwise, there will be just your personal opinion. And believe me, there are many people who have different opinions. So in other words, you your proposed ideas need to be based on facts and sound reasoning. Seven, transparency and clear organization. So the ideas that you write about they must be transparent. Again, we need the help of our expert here. Bob, what does this mean? According to Bob, this means that you have to be maximally explicit about what you're writing. And Bob says that you must assume that your reader knows little or nothing about what you're writing. So be as explicit as possible. So don't assume that your audience knows about the topic that you're writing. And of course, your writing must be coherent, it uh, must be concise and well organized. It means that it has to be well structured to have headings and subheadings. Eight is the references. And this is one of the most important elements in academic writing. So basically any academic piece of writing should contain a reference section. A list of references, a list of sources, for example, books or articles that you've used in your academic writing. So in order to support your ideas with sound reasoning, you will inevitably need to refer to or quote other people's work that you have read. So we call this citing the sources. Basically, you use uh, other people's ideas in your own written work. If you fail to do that, you basically plagiarize. And what can be the consequences of plagiarism? I'll explain in one of the videos that are going to follow. Don't miss that. Nine is the appendix or appendices for plural. It refers to the additional information, usually too large, to insert in the main body of your written text. And it's usually placed at the end of your assignment or your research paper. And you can refer the reader to it in the appropriate place in the main text. For example, you can put a footnote 
uh, in the main text and write C appendices or C appendix uh, on that page, for example. And finally, is the length of your work. So basically, at the university, you're expected to write extensively. How many words do you think you should write? Correct. Approximately around from two to 3,000 words if it's a written assignment. So forget how you worked at school, because at the university, you have limited time and a lot of reading. So basically, you'll have to master new reading skills, skimming and scanning the text. It requires practice and deciding what to include and what to mate. So basically, you'll have to obtain good skills, identifying the key and most relevant information, and you must write concisely and economically, and of course, avoid any unnecessary information. Don't include everything that you have read. So to sum up, in this video, we have covered many aspects of academic writing. And in the next videos, I will discuss in detail some of the aspects I have highlighted in this video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. See you next time.